All right, exercises make us strong. There's another exercise for you to do today where you work in 3DS Max. Start out with a primitive known as a sphere and you turn into a bicycle seat. A couple different ways to do this. So I'm going to go into the application called 3DS Max. This is throwaway work. I don't need to save it. So I'm just going to say new and do a new scene. Do not need to save this. All right, so just to orient us more like we're used to when we start a new scene, I've got four viewports. I'm going to make sure this one is P for perspective. And make sure I can keep track of where my, my middle of my world is. I'm using the middle mouse button to drag this around. Uh, if I'm not recording, well, in the, in the uh, Schoology conference, you'll see I'm actually doing this. This is going to be a speed run. You can play it back at any speed you want to later. I'm going to start out with a sphere. I'm just going to click to drag and create a sphere. And I'm going to change the number of segments to oh, 128. Give myself a lot of segments. No, that's overkill. I'll go with 64. And in order to make this a little bit easier to deal with, I'm going to make it, oh, I don't know, 200 centimeters. It would be a very large bicycle seat IRL, but... What I want to do now is just point out that in a front viewport, it looks almost like the Death Star. I'm going to add a modifier. And in order to see it better, I'm going to maximize my front viewport here by using the button in the right hand corner. The modifier, funny thing is, this is called Sphere, but this is going to be my bike seat. So I'm going to rename it Bike Seat right now. I'm going to use my F4 button to bring up the shaded view. Make sure I'm in, uh, let's see, not a wireframe override. I'm just going to go into default shading here, but I'm going to press F4 so I can see my, my grids on there. So the, the polygons on this object are going to help me. The ones in the background are not, so I'm going to touch G on the keyboard to turn that background grid off. I'm going to go to the modify panel, which is the box that looks like it's got a bent pipe in the middle of it. And the modifier I'm looking for starts with the letter F. So when I click in here, I touch the letter F on my keyboard, and I'm going to go with FFD, which stands for Freeform Deformation, 4 by 4 by 4. So as I do so, I need to open up the, and expose the detailed elements of the control points. When I get to control points, I should be able to select them and work with them. I'm not seeing them in my display, so I'm going to make sure I've actually got... I'm going to turn wireframe back on for a minute. Not sure why I'm, I'm not seeing that. There's my sphere. There's my FFD. There's my lattice. And it's not showing in my display. What I want to do is grab the control points here, and I don't see it displaying. So I'm going to touch on P to go to perspective viewport. See my grid here. I'm not sure why. I got three spheres here. That could be a problem. All right, I'm going to delete these two spheres because I don't need them. I'm going to go in my scene explorer here and I'm going to actually just click on delete. And I click on this one to delete. And I click on this one and say delete. So I've just got my bike seat. I need to add a modifier here. It's going to be FFD. I'll go three by three by three. There we go. So I'm going to turn that one off for a minute and I'm going to turn on FFD four by four by four just as a reality check on my brain. Yep. I don't need the three by three by three. They're both available, but I like the power of more control points. So now this next part's interesting. With the control points as selectable, meaning individually, I'm going to use my marquee select, which I can then use to drag and grab. Now, this button next to it's very interesting. It says I need to surround it versus I just need to touch it. I'm going to keep it on the surround mode so that I can grab the top control points. And using W on the keyboard, I can move the control points and start to flatten the top. I'm going to do something similar from the bottom. The snap is on right now, which is not helping me at all. And I'm going to make an arbitrary decision here. This is the front viewport, so I'm going to switch over to the left viewport. 
is a shortcut key for left, which is L. And what I'm going to do now is grab just control points in the middle here and drag them to give myself a pointy front on my bike seat. I'm going to use the middle mouse button to scroll over. And I'm going to scooch the back of um, the bike seat in. Now I'm working on a left viewport because I want to make sure I'm lined up with this. I can squish down the middle again here. Again, I'm just selecting control points and altering them bit by bit. And here's the cool thing about these control points is if you get to a point where they get stretched out and they're not so usable anymore, we can easily change. And by the way, I'm going to change back to uh, from wireframe to default shading here and press F4. It's my preferred modeling mode. I'm going to look from the top and see what this is looking like. So I would like to look from the top, touching T, my viewport back into view here. And um, I haven't talked about a symmetry modifier yet. I'm really tempted to use one. But because I haven't talked about it, I won't do that now. I'll do that in our further project in the week where we take a box and turn it into a jet. So what I want to do is I want to move these control points in. And snap will be helpful here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll grab the mirror on the other side and move them in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that should be pretty much lined up. So my sphere is looking much more bicycle seat-like. But I've gotten to a point now where I'd like to reset my control points so I can manipulate it a little bit further. So on the FFD 4x4x4, I'm going to stack another FFD 4x4x4, which is going to give me a new level of detail that I can work with. G is going to turn off the grid because that was becoming quite complicated. And now that I got a new grid set up, I could grab, for example, just this middle piece here on the control point. Make sure you're on the control points. Grab just one. You can push the middle down a little bit better. Get a little bit more of that seat-like effect. And maybe on the bottom, you want to make the bottom look perhaps a little bit more like it's, uh, it's come out of a manufacturing facility. Our goal is not to make a bike seat we can 3D print and ride around on. It's just practice working with a modifier. Uh, another thing to mention is sometimes it's important that you click on something called ignore back facing. It looks to me like I affected both sides of this at one point. It's salvageable, but it might look a little wonky from different angles. All right. And then to finish this up so that we know it looks more like a bike seat um, from the left viewport again, I'm going to add another piece of geometry that's going to be a cylinder to give it reference. So that's a creation operation. I'm going to grab a cylinder and click to create the base. Um, add length. Now I can't really see where it's at, so if I rotate this around a little bit, Use W for move. I can expose the parameters of this object by getting into the modify panel. I don't even need to add a modifier. If I want to make it taller, I just add height. If I want to rotate it, rotate the object and set up a bike seat with a post. Now, um, this next part, I'm not sure how well I explained it is to take an object like this and show it from multiple angles, we can, we can actually just create copies of them. I'm not worried about colors here. But what I'm going to do, remember that marquee select? I'm going to select both objects with them both selected and using W. I'm going to hold down Shift. And by dragging on this, I can make, I can make it, for example, an instance of it. So I'm going to control click, or sorry, Shift click and drag another copy. What I can do here on the, well, let's make it an instance. So if we change one, it shows up on the others. I'm just going to change this to back view. I can build, because they're instances, I can rotate this around so I can show the back view of the seat. <laughs> here I get a pretty clear view that I made a mistake in uh, the post alignment. So I've got the back view. I've got the side view. I might want to show it, show a top view. So just for explicitness, I'm going to grab the, uh, this part here, W for move, 
hold down shift, drag another view. Uh, let's go call this one top. Sorry about that. And I'm going to switch from the move key to the rotate to uh, key, which is the E key. And show the top of the bike seat. So I can show in a more interesting fashion a uh, combination of the top side and back of my bike seat all in one view. And to make sure we take pride in our work, we're going to create a primitive. I would like to use the spline called text. To me, it's less of a cop out than the, uh, all right, so that says copy. I'll just change, update this so it says student created this bike seat from a sphere. And I think I'm way off in 3D space here. So a couple different ways to do it. Since I'm just going to do a quick render here, I'm just going to switch into scaling and scale this object up. Oh, I just created a second copy because I clicked because I was on the create panel. All right, with it selected, I'm going to switch over to scaling, scale it up so it looks good. Not going to worry about the spelling right now because what's more important, I emphasize add an extrude. Actually, I'm going to show you a better way than extrude. I'm going to use bevel. Bevel is very similar, but you can add more detail to it. So first, I'm going to give it some depth. Whoa. Just like two is fine, actually, or even one is fine. And then I'm going to come to level two, and I'm going to change this to a to a very small value like 0.25. What that's going to do is it's going to change the edges just a little bit. Actually, I think negative 0.25 is what I want. Really got wonky really fast. Let's see what I got going on here. Did I not bevel on the proper axes? All right, I'm going to get rid of bevel because this demo just went south, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and stick with extrude and just make sure I've got something that shows up in 3D. And to do a quick render, it's Shift Q. Save your work and turn that in. So Shift Q. There it is. You can save your scene. Make sure you save it on the drive letter that's got your your number, which is also known as the H drive. You see, ready to so turn in an image that shows that. Even if you didn't get these done, turn in what you got done now and use Mark is done. Yeah, if you didn't get them done, just turn in as far as you got. Okay. Okay, and then when you're done, do make sure you save uh, you save your work, close out of 3ds Max or whatever else you've been using. Make sure you pick a type here, and make sure you're saving on your H drive, okay, so that it's there when you come back the next day. Again, I'm not going to save this scene. I'm done. I got my work saved. I'm just going to say reset. I'll probably go through this again next semester, next uh, quarter. So we're going to build up accuracy and speed by doing a number of quick exercises this week. Might be a couple of minutes of time. All right. Let me know what questions you got. I'm going to wrap it up. You guys have a great day. Be smart, be safe, be kind, and we'll pick up on Tuesday.